Hi, I'm Kristen. Welcome to the Dye School, where I show you how to hand dye fabric, yarn, and clothing to color your world. Today, I will show you how I went from overdyed denim that I thrifted from uh, three pairs of jeans to this Sashiko Boro stitched bag. Um, yeah, so jeans transformed into a beautiful bag. May or may not have seen a previous video where I took upcycled denim and overdyed it purple and ended up with various tones of purple for the final fabric. Today I'm going to show you where I'm headed with this project and get started on marking and stitching. So a few things collided to make this project come to fruition in my brain, including this amazing book by Jessica Marquez that's called Make and Mend that features Sashiko-inspired embroidery projects um, and basically shows beginners how to go about reproducing these on their own projects in addition to a blueprint slash used to be craftsy class that Jessica taught that I watched and the my interest in bags of all kinds and coming across this bag on Amazon um, that's basically like a men's DOP kit, D-O-P-P -P kit, um, which is like basically like a travel tote or something like that that you can put cosmetics in or small items and, you know, make it easy to carry around. Um, so the key here is that it's basically like a squared rectangle with a top zipper with a zipper pull and it has this leather leathery strap on the front of it. I'm not gonna make reinforced bottoms or anything like that but I am gonna try to find a upcycled belt that I can pinch into service as this this loop. So let me show you a watercolor sketch I made of where I'm headed with this. Um, this is basically it. So we have the different tones of overdyed denim, and each of these areas is a different patch with the a crew or off white stitching on certain sections of the fabric. Now, I don't think I'll be able to do a conventional seam like with pieced, like with piecing a, say, quilt top or something like that because of the bulk of the seam with two pieces of denim coming together. So I thought I could just lay them on top of each other and straight stitch with my machine around them. So basically they're just like laying on top of each other with the raw edges exposed in some cases and just like zip across the top to piece it together. So we'll see if that works or not. The, um, the total size of the piece that I need to make this is about 14 by 17 inches. So I'll be stitching and patching a 14 by 17 inch piece to then assemble this to add the zipper and then add the, um, the leather strap. So um, the first thing I need to do is press the crap out of my fabric and then I will transfer the pattern to each piece 
and then get to stitching. I'm just working on my kitchen table here. Um, I have a wool felt pressing pad and my not so enthusiastic iron that looks like it has some kind of crap pouring out of it. Well, that's a little disappointing, isn't it? I've got really hard water at my house, so I'm sure that that's part of it. Here, let me steam this away from here to see if I can get some of this crap out of the out of the holes. All right, I guess that's why they recommend using distilled water in this these things. <laughs> yeah, that's really terrible. Oh well, it'll come off. Alright, so that residue brushed off, so that's good. I'm sure by the time I finish doing this, all the crap will be out of my iron. I'm just kind of steaming the bejesus out of this. My dog is having a little zoomy moment in the living room. That's what that jingling is. To transfer the design to the fabric, I have a copy of the pattern here. And I'm going to put a blank piece of paper underneath this. And then I have this transfer paper. I'm going to use yellow, even though I have choices of other colors. I think the other ones are too dark. So the yellow will show up. So I'll put this down. And I'll put my pattern on the top, being careful to have the edges as close to parallel of the green of the fabric as I can. And then I'm going to use this ruler and this ballpoint tool to transfer the pattern. Hopefully it'll work. Once I get a couple lines drawn here, I'll peek underneath to see if I've been successful or not. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Probably have to darken it with a chalk pencil afterward.
starting out with a sort of uh, mostly straight line stitching pattern because I've never done this before and I think maybe hand stitching around curves in the beginning might be a little bit challenging for me so straight lines is what I'm going to stick with for the first pattern. And I copied this, I printed this pattern from Jessica's book that I mentioned earlier. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below this video so that you can check it out too. Probably would have been useful to either tape or pin this so that I wouldn't have to have such a gorilla grip on it while I'm transferring. There are other techniques for transferring a pattern, but this one used things that I have around for sewing already, so this is the one that I chose. You can just draw a grid straight onto the fabric and then draw the lines in at whatever scale that you're working with. That seems like a pretty easy way to do it too. All right, I think this might be my last line. Let me check this out. Okay, that yeah, looks pretty good. I'll just get a a pencil to make those lines a little heavier. Couldn't put my hands on my the chalk pencil that I wanted to use, so I have this chocolin. Um, it's got powdered chalk inside of here, and then it's got this little rolling thing that deposits the chalk onto the fabric. And you can see I went a little bit off-road there already. Because this fabric is a twill uh, weave, if I'm not careful, the wheel gets dragged off from the ruler line because the the weave of the fabric is going diagonally and that's kind of counter to a straight direction all right I can see these well enough so that I can forge ahead all right so that's pattern number one doubled. So uh, I take off a length that is approximately twice my forearm length. And I'm also going to use a, um, a needle threader because nothing makes me crazier than screwing around threading a needle. So how this one works is the um, Needles with larger eyes go over on the right hand thing and then you just stick it right in there and the thread gets stuck beside it and then you push this little thing and it sticks the thread through and there you go. Bingo bango. So um, I'm gonna, like I said, double this over and not knot it because I'm gonna end up sewing these down with a sewing machine and trapping the uh, the threads behind the fabric so I don't really care about knotting but you might want to knot. Um, I'm also going to use a traditional thimble on my middle finger. Um, Sashiko thimbles look like this and they go down here and 
the traditional way to do it is to have the needle in your pinch between your thumb and your middle finger and then sort of dive down and grab fabric like that and then you can push with this metal kind of dimpled platform and push your needle through like that however since this whole thing is new to me I didn't want to try an entirely new way of using a thimble so I'm just going to use what I'm used to and put the needle between my index finger and my thumb and use my middle finger for the traditional thimble, traditional Western thimble. Okay, so you're basically just going to do this motion. So you're diving the needle tip down and then pushing it back up, collecting fabric on your needle as you go. Like that. And like I said, I'm just going to leave a tail because I'm going to sew around this afterward. So that's it. It's fairly simple. The idea is to have even and uniform stitches. And that may take a little bit of practice. Like that. So the things that you'll need in addition to your needle, your thread, um, your thimble, are a pair of sharp embroidery scissors. I like to use um, thread conditioner. This is Thread Magic. There are other kinds um, to basically wrangle your thread to make it act a little better when you're stitching. Um, hold this down in your non-dominant hand and then put your thumb over it and draw the thread across it. This really is pretty magical. It um, reduces the friction between the fabric and the thread so that your stitching goes really smoothly. It also somehow uh, reduces the likelihood that your thread is going to twist and tangle as you stitch. If you've ever dyed or upcycled something and transformed it into a totally different project, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you're up to. I've taped out a um, 13 and a half by 17 inch frame with um, painter's tape on my work surface and I've laid out the stitched patches and blank dyed fabric in a pattern for the layout. The, um, the zipper will end up being on the short edge so I planned that so that there wouldn't be a lot of stuff on the edge when I go to sew. Um, so what I'm going to do from here is pin all this together and then stitch around each patch to keep it in place to make a solid piece of fabric that will then become the outer part of my bag.
I've also placed the motifs so that when this is folded up into a side that the eyeballs will be close to the zipper so that I'll be able to see them. Um, this will likely be the bottom part of the bag or this part right here. Um, so I have the bigger piece down there and this side, this part is on the side. I've kept a lot of the uh, fringed edges, raw edges of this because I really like the look of it. Um, I'll be tucking these ends of the stitching underneath so that they don't show, however. Everything's all threaded, and at this point I feel like things are kind of held together by faith, so frankly I can't wait to get it sewn together. I've got so many pins in this, it's ridiculous. Alright, so I'm going to line up the inside of this little, whatever that's called, um, the inside edge of that with the fabric to get like a scant whatever that would be maybe quarter maybe something smaller I don't know so let's go for it I can't use my knee lifter because the camera's in the way, but that's okay. Beginning, back stitch a couple stitches, and cut. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Nice and flat. This is basically just a straight applique because the uh, fabric is whole on the back instead of being pieced like some of these other pieces. So I'm just going to continue to do this for all the pieces and I'll be back. All right, here's one of the squirrelier areas where this eye has a little tail I want to preserve. 
um, and they're about it's the intersection of about three layers here down to this bottom tail. So I'm just going to take it slowly and carefully, making sure this is all lying flat. And just do a little pot pot down to the tail. And pivot with my needle in. sure all that stuff is lying flat. to the edge and pivot a little bit again. And then making sure this is flat. Come back to the beginning. stitch and cut all right so that came out pretty flat you can see that this is this is still kind of a mess down here but once all these are tacked down that'll be fine finally gotten around to the last patch here this last eyeball needs to be sewn down Okay, I noticed, oops, noticed somewhere back here that um, I missed one little seam. There it is right here. So, I'm just going to add this one in. So that should be it. Everything is sewn down. And now I should square this up. I just squared this up and realized that I'm going to lose part of my eyelashes here in in the seam for the zipper so what I'm gonna do is pick these out and so it won't have upper eyelashes 
rather than having them be stuck in the seam. I think that's a better option, even though the whole thing is kind of a bummer. And I didn't show the actual squaring up because um, it was kind of a do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do situation because my rotary cutter blade is so old that I had a problem going through even one layer of denim. So, um, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Make sure you have a new rotary blade when you're cutting something as serious as this. For the lining, I've chosen an old favorite shirt that it makes me sort of sad to cut up, but that's the way it goes. It has some uh, embroidery on it, and I like the details of the threads, loose threads, and like deconstructed look that basically goes with the outer hand stitching. Um, so I've just... I had originally planned on taking the snaps off, which is why this one is missing, but I'm just going to snap it up and use it as is. There's this um, fish fabric from the pocket bag of one of the pairs of jeans that I'm going to use down here as a extension of the fabric because it doesn't quite make the dimensions that I need. So I'm just going to applique that there and then um, in my impatience to sew the lining together I used the same color thread that I used for the denim and it looks like shit. So I'm going to rip that out, change the thread to something lighter and also I'll need to change my presser foot because I couldn't get the presser foot past the bulk of the snaps that I decided to keep in. So I'm going to have to use a zipper foot, I think, to sneak past that. Anyway, I hate ripping out. I've squared up both the outer piece and the lining complete with fish applique that goes with this fabric really well kind of accidentally it's as if I like these colors or something <laughs> um, a little bit worried about the lightweight lining and the heavyweight outer being cut approximately the same size. Um, I guess we'll see what happens. I need a quarter inch seam for the zipper insertion. So I'm going to measure from the needle and put a marker right here. It's a little crickety down there, but let's see if we can fix that. There. This is just a scrap piece. All right, so I've clipped the zipper to the sh one short edge of the outer fabric and with the right sides together. Sorry, I keep bumping that. And We're going to get a quarter inch seam allowance with that. Okay. 
Maybe. I do this. Sew it from this way. Because my needle is on the right. And I can use that as a guide for the left. All right, let's do that. See what happens. Here we go. feel like it's crooked as crap. Straight and square are not my strong points, but ahead we go. we can sneak this slider past here. Like that. side of the zipper. I didn't veer off too terribly, I guess. Okay. Clip off my little leader. And I'll pin the other side. I forgot that I need to add the lining before I sew the other side of the zipper. So what I've done is to clip the lining right sides together with the outer. And it's kind of made a sandwich with the lining, the zipper, and then the outer. So I'm just going to basically go on the same line, try to stay on the same line as I did with the other stitching. to bubble up and just kind of ease that in there, ease on down the road. sandwich. So now that's the inside with the raw edge turned back. And this is the outside. Okay, so now I get to do 
the opposite side. I've clipped the other side, the other edge of the outer to the remaining side of the zipper and pulled the lining out of the way so that I can stitch the other side the zipper. Probably should go a little more slowly than I have been. Haha. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna ease that up because it looks like it's about to bunch. Can't have bunching. It's got a big clump of fabric there. Let's see. I can't get this better. I can jam that sucker down there. I'm trying to get it past the needle. Oh, there we go. Yay! All right. That makes it a little easier. Never be afraid to rassle your sewing. the other side of the zipper and now we need to do the same stitch for the lining so that the lining is attached to the other side also so I opened the zipper and turned it so that the denim part was on the outside and the lining part is on the inside. Magically. So now, we need to top stitch that. Keep that lying down. So now, I'm going to measure this distance and this distance away from the zipper to be certain that the zipper is in the center and then we will box the corners. I have marked the box corners. It's two inches from the raw edge and an inch and a half from the folded edge on each corner. And I've also clipped this side seam because I'm going to stitch it. Being careful to back stitch right here because all this square is going to be cut away eventually. So I'll back stitch right here and also back stitch before and after the zipper for reinforcement 
and then backstitch here because again this will be all be cut away and I have a half inch seam allowance Also be very careful that your the ends of your zippers meet because of course they're gonna need to zip together when you're done with all this. So there's one side, and I'm going to do the other side, and I'll be back with you. So both sides are sewn. The sewing machine was a little uncertain here with the thicknesses. Probably should have had a different needle, but oh well, it's done now. Okay, so now I'm going to cut these corners out and then come back and sew them. All right, so I've finished the hand and machine stitching <clears throat> and this is what I've got so far. I'm really, really pleased with how this is coming together. Um, really, the only thing I need to do now is to um, put a pom-pom on the zipper pull to make it easier to grab onto. And I'm also going to uh, put a strip of leather on here as like a tote handle. Um, yeah, so those are what I'm gonna be up to now. If you remember when I was dyeing the fabric I also decided to dye some of this um, what is basically macrame cord um, this is the color that it started out as and I put a little bundle in each of the two dye baths um, to get this pink color and this kind of variegated purplish color um, so now I'm going to make a pom-pom using this yarn. Clip this little beauty. These are just the ties that I had on it to, um, to keep it the skeins from getting tangled in the when it was dyed. And basically pom-poms just like a chubby tassel so um, instead of using like a pom-pom maker or something like that I'm just gonna wind it around my hand and then tie it off with something stronger than this. Hmm. All right, well, let me just use this. All right, I'm gonna tie like a real 
square knot so that it doesn't come undone. So that's just right over left and left over right, left over right. And then I'll clip these loops. And this could have been a little more even, but oh well. All right, so I'm going to grab onto this pink part and then um, maybe undo these so it makes it frizzly. Yeah, this will probably take forever, but let's do that. I'm untwisting this by going the opposite direction of the way it was twisted when it was manufactured to loosen up the plies of the yarn. All right, since this is sort of like watching paint dry, I'm going to um, take it off camera and continue doing this and come back when it's all frizzly. And I'm back. All right, so I have this little sort of Muppet, <laughs> gob of Muppet, Muppet hair. Um, and now I'm going to trim the crap out of it and probably make it, I don't know, two-thirds of what it is now. And sort of make a mess in the process. This can become one of those projects where you just keep cutting it and cutting it and then end up with nothing at the end. So um, I need to commit to a spot here pretty soon. 
call it good. Let's see what that does. All right, a little bit more. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call that fine, and then the next step will be to attach this to the zipper pull. So, let me go get the bag, and we can do that. And we're back with the zipper pull. Uh, I chose this zipper intentionally so that I would have a big hole here to put this through because I knew that I was going to want to put something like this on the zipper. If you don't have a zipper like this and you have a more traditional shaped zipper pull, you might need to use some kind of a needle or other thing to poke the poke the yarn through the hole. Alright, so I'm just going to do the same scene as I did when I was tying the, um, the pieces of the yarn together, uh, right over left. And left over right. I could have made this longer to start with. That would have been helpful. Tie it really tight. And again, I'm just going to undo this and let it do its frizzy thing. Because that sort of look kind of entertains me. <laughs> Clearly. And it also matches what's happening with these, um, these patches. The edges are raveling. So I like that. Okay, so there's my pom-pom. I also have this little um, silver charm that I'm going to put on here. It's got a, whatever these are called, lobster clasp or lobster claw clasp. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, I'm going to put it right, uh, right there or maybe... here or hmm. I'm going to put it in a spot where it can be seen easily I mean, I'll just put it right here like that good yeah like that okay so now all that's left is to put this um, the piece of leather on there and we'll be done. I have this small piece of uh, I think it's upholstery leather scrap um, and since leather doesn't have a green in the sense of fabric there's no I can't go wrong making a straight line here because it doesn't have to stay perpendicular to the green. And so I'm just going to make a cut line for line number one. And I probably should use my rotary cutter for this, but I don't feel like going to get it. So I'm just going to cut along my chalk line. And 
Let's see how big of a piece we can get out of this. The maximum width I can get here is mm, like an inch and a quarter, inch and five eighths. Let's call it an inch and a quarter. Scissors again. I'm just gonna cut along that chalk line once again. All right, I'll just make this a little make this straight. Okay, so my idea is to um, punch holes in each edge of this and then just um, sew it on with the same thread I used to do the sashiko stitching. Um, so let me mark a line about a quarter of an inch from the edge. But I don't get into trouble with that being close to that edge like that. I don't think it'll be a problem. I'm just going to eyeball it on this side because that's the kind of kid I am. Alright, so I think if I put maybe five or even three holes, approximately equidistant, um, I think I'll be fine. I'm using this um, leather punch from this little punch set and a maple mallet that I made like 25 years ago. Alright, so Put this little beauty maybe approximately in the middle. And then there's another one there. Yeah, that sound was probably super noisy for you. Sorry about that. Okay, so there's three holes on that side. Big holes in my mat. Just kind of drag. All right. So there you go. Hmm. I'm thinking I want to put two more holes in there so that the stitching isn't so coarse looking. Oops. better. Okay. Now let's get this sucker stitched on. All right, we're in this home stretch here. I'm putting the handle on the opposite side of where the pom-pom um, will be when the zipper is zipped up. And the placement for it 
will be halfway between this seam um, in this distance here. So I'll just put this down like that. And there's sort of a wad of crap in here in the inside that I need to avoid stitching into. So um, this time I'm, I am going to make a knot in my thread because I'm just going to bury the knot inside the bag and the first hole be about here. Wow, that's thick there. Little cow. Okay, let's see. Alright, that's a good spot. So then I'm just gonna poke it. down to the inside and then back to the right side. And since this is kind of awkward, oh, here we go. I was going to I'll do it off camera and then come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here is the strap on the bag. So exciting. Right, it slipped a little bit there. But I'm going to choose to feel that that's fine. Okay, so it's done. I'm really, really pleased with how this came out. It, um, it's pretty much exactly how I envisioned it from the drawing straight through the whole process. Um, I love the lining. I love that the lining is a shirt that I used to wear all the time. I love the little fish that I added in there. My little goldfish friends. Love that the details of the shirt are echoed in the sort of fringy look of the exterior. I love my pom-pom, my little charm. Yep, I'm really pleased. I'm also pleased with how the eyeballs are both on the top, which I didn't really plan, but I'm happy that it came out like that. And there's another eyeball on the bottom. So there you have it. If you'd like to set up a dye studio at your house, I wrote a free guide to help you get started. Click on the link in the description below. I talk about supplies you'll need, how to choose a good spot in your house for hand dyeing, and there's a glossary of dyeing terms. Go check it out. That's all for now. Remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. See you next time 